good day to every listener from Johan Bosman, Pastor Johan Bosman of South Africa. We greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for being with my brothers and sisters in Christ. Yes, Lord, open your word. Thank you that we are so honored to to be called your sons and daughters. Thank you that you will use the Holy Spirit to guide us through your word, to show us the truth. We pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Wednesdays we do the show on the bigger picture. And we go through God's word and try to keep everything in context. And we're looking at places in the Bible and persons and personalities. And we are now at a place called Shechem. How did we get there? We were reading through John 4 in the start, in the first episode, and we saw that Jesus had to go to a town, Sica, in some versions, other versions says Shechem, and he, he had to go through it. So that was out of his route to go to Galilee. So he said he had to go there. So what did he, why, did, why did he have to go there? Because there was a woman at a well, and we saw a divine appointment with, with that woman, um, the adulterous woman, some, some say, and, um, but it's in Samaria. And we're just looking at the, at the town, Shechem, and a few things opened to us, and we saw um, with Abram, when he went to the promised land, Canaan, God said to him, he must go there. And he was called from his hometown, Ur, and he went to Iran, and he stayed there, and then he left his father there, and he came to Canaan. When he entered the promised land over the Jordan, then he came to a place called Shechem, that he will make him a great nation among all nations, and he heard the voice of the Lord and he built it an altar. First we said it was the first, we thought it was the first altar, but we saw now Manoah built the first altar. I really encourage you to read the Genesis from, yeah, to start at Genesis, but it's just beautiful again. So after Abram, we get to Isaac. The Bible doesn't really speak a lot about Isaac's life, but the calling of his wife um, and all those things. But then the two sons, and that was Esau and Jacob, and how Jacob got the inheritance of and the blessing from his father Isaac. The way he got that, why can that we can maybe do on another day. And then Jacob fled from Esau and he got to a place of Laban, the family of him, and he saw Rachel and he wanted to marry her, and but he had to work for her seven years. And when he got married, he saw it wasn't his... Laban's daughter Rachel, but it was Leah. So he had to work another year, a few years, and it went on, and he eventually got Rachel, and eventually they fled. They fled Laban's house or place, but he was called by an angel, by the Lord to tell him to go back to his relative's house. Last week we spoke about how everything went out, meeting his brother Esau, how he was afraid and sent everybody in front, and eventually he went in front, and he got to a place called Shechem. And that's the place we speak about, and it's just a recap, but we're pulling the thread through. That's why we call the show The Big Picture, because... It's a place it's a, it's of significance in the Bible, and I'm sure that's why we just recapped what 
the previous two episodes was about and now we're gonna go what happened next in Shechem Jacob bought a piece of land there in front of Shechem 400 pieces of silver and now we get to the scripture in Genesis 34 today we're gonna read from the New Living Translation so please read with me on Genesis 34 I'm going to use the Bible app, so we're going to use that for, for today to read through Genesis 34. This Bible app is also very, I use it quite a lot, and it's got all the different Bible versions in, and also the thing that I normally use as well sometimes is, is the audiobooks. On that so we're going to use that today from the New Living Translation they're going to read for us on the app chapter 34 revenge against Shechem one day Dinah the daughter of Jacob and Leah went to visit some of the young women who lived in the area but when the local prince Shechem son of Hamer the Hivite saw Dinah he seized her and raped her but then he fell in love with her and he tried to win her affection with tender words so i prayed to the lord and asked him really to to reveal to me what is in this passage that i must talk about isn't god's word just wonderful how it just sometimes you you read over this a few times but sometimes it just grabs on you um i really felt sorry for dinah and I really looked into it and how brutal it was and how but then I looked into it and there's so many things locked locked up in this Genesis thirty four. So let's quickly break it up a bit. So we are at Shechem and that's the main part. So in verse two we see where Shechem comes from and the name of Shechem. It was this and when Shechem the son of Hamor the Hevite, prince of the country, saw her. He took her and lay with her and defiled her. This is the King James Version. In the ESV Version, we read, He seized her and lay with her and humiliated her. The TLV, Tree of Life, reads, He took her and lay with her and raped her. The Amplified Version reads, He Kidnap her and lay intimately with her by force, humbling and offending her. The NIV reads, he took her and raped her. So it's very clear what happened there is, it, it's heartbreaking to think that we humans are so driven by our, sometimes with our sexual thoughts and uh, sexual desires and that we can do something as brutal as that to another person and then there's a big lesson in that we can throw him with rocks we can judge him but there's a in today's world maybe if the scriptures were written by a person not inspired by the holy spirit as the whole word of God is inspired by the Holy Spirit, if it was just written by a person, if these words wouldn't even come there. It would just be, they had sex. He nailed her. How do the boys speak in the bar? How do they, how do they speak around the campfire when they're alone about this girl these days? And... I'm not putting me anything above anybody because I was also a boy and I came out of uh, lots of, I had my times where I was a real sinner. And yeah, I know how boys speak how, and even girls these days, and I'm sure I'm not a girl, but I heard how they can also, on pajama parties, they can, they can speak about sex as it's nothing. The pornographic industry that we see now on netflix there's the show cuties and it's young young girls um basically that they they act like prostitutes 
I haven't seen it, but I can just see on the posters and uh, because there's a real uh, onslaught on that and may that be successful that the people will ban and and uh, get off Netflix because it's child pornography, basically. And how serious is that? So yes, um, so this is one point that came out just when just when we start reading is it's um, what what Shechem did here is terrible and it is a lesson for us in that and let's go on to see he was a Hevite his father Hamel was a Hevite and later on even in Acts in Acts 7 we're going to read that later. It's also a part on Shechem, where Stephen went to the Sanhedrin. In his speech to the Sanhedrin, he even mentions Shechem here and his father, Hamel. Because this father received money, a hundred pieces of silver, for a land, a piece of land where Jacob and them are, and where they also dug a, a well. And that well is John 4. These all these lines all come to Shechem. That's why we are looking at the bigger picture here. But let's quickly go into the Hevites. Who were the Hevites? Where, where does that come from? And then you, we know everybody, uh, we know Noah's story, our brother Philip, he's also speaking about a lot of getting into the ark. So we know Noah. After Noah, he had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Let's look into Genesis 9, verse 18. It says that the sons of Noah who came out of the ark were Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Ham was the father of Canaan. These were the three sons of Noah, and from them came the people who were scattered over the world. Noah, a man of soil, proceeded to plant a vineyard. When he drank some of the wine, he became drunk and lay uncovered inside his tent. Ham, the father of Canaan, saw his father naked and told his two brothers outside. But Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it across their shoulders. Then they walked backwards and covered their father's naked body. Their faces were turned the other way so they would not see their father naked. When Noah awoke from the wine and found out what his youngest son had done to him, he said, Cursed! Canaan, the lowest of slaves, will he be to his brothers? This itself is a very deep passage, because if you look, if we look, it's prominent that uh, it says Ham, the father of Canaan. Ham did that; he told his brother, but Noah said, "Cursed be Canaan." So let's quickly look at the Hamites. So we look at this, this, the three brothers, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And then in Genesis 10, it gives the register. And sometimes we read over these things because it's, it's just names. And how do they link? But God does not put in one word in this Bible that's not of significance. So from verse 6, we can read that the sons of Ham were Cush, Egypt, Put and Canaan. Then from verse 7 to verse 14, it just gives the the sons of, of Ham's sons. And then in verse 15, we go to Canaan was the father of Sidom, his firstborn, and of the Hittites, Jebusites, Amorites, Gergesites, Hevites, which we are looking at, Archites, Sinites, Arvidites, Zamorites, and Hamorites. So all these names we're gonna you, we're gonna see in Joshua again, because these were the nations that that uh, was in in Canaan, where God promised the land of Canaan to Abraham later on, 
and we see the significance of this curse and this what happens here and um, yeah that's why we are looking at the bigger picture so we there's so many things in this because just above in verse 8 we see Cush was the father of Nimrod and he's also the son of Ham Ham was the guy that looked at his father naked but Nimrod was known he was he was a hunter before the Lord that is why it is said like Nimrod a mighty hunter before the Lord again just reading all these things we can delve into and there's lots of questions coming up and then those questions we must answer so that's why we call it the bigger picture because we'll get back to this someday um on Canaan what why Canaan but yeah let's go back to Shechem when Shechem the son of Hamor the Hevite so we just went back into Genesis just to see where the Hevites come from and then we get to the to the thing again on the rape of Dinah or in today's terms we might just have the sex he had and with Dinah and how did they find it out and all these things all these questions come up but one thing that really stood out here is is just in the next verse his heart was drawn to Dinah the daughter of Jacob this is in the NIV I'm going to read a few other verses and then we see what happens when you have sex with another person here I think that the ESV really sums it up good for me. It reads, And his soul was drawn to Dinah, the daughter of Jacob. He loved the young woman and spoke tenderly to her. As well as the amplified classic version, it, it reads, And his soul longed for and clung to Dinah, daughter of Jacob. And he loved the girl and spoke comfortably to her young heart's wishes also in the king james version it reads and he sold clave unto dinah the daughter of jacob and he loved the damsel and spake kindly unto da unto the damsel i'm not english but so i'm not 100 percent sure i on the king james version it i really got the clang i'm not sure about the damsel i never heard that word before so yeah, if there's anybody in English, please help me on that. It's an interesting word. Also, it raises questions. It's, it makes you dig deeper into God's word, into the truth, to find out the truth. Lead, we are led by the Holy Spirit. So yeah, that's just one thing that I really want to see. Um, I got to that, that your soul clung to each other. Um, it's a gift from God in the marriage. It's something we cannot do outside of the marriage um, because your soul will clung to all these girls and boys and one day you're going to get married or maybe you're already married. But I really want to use this for opportunity. So let's go to the cross to our Lord Jesus Christ and ask him for forgiveness. Let's ask him to break the, the chains that the Satan will bind these souls forever until the Lord Jesus Christ come and take it all away. Because it's so unfair to your loved ones, to your wife, or to your future husband or wife that's going to come out. So let's just use this and just to see that this is not in the will of the Lord and that is the reason why because your soul will clung onto that other person's soul and that's unfair to your future husband or wife if you are still pure and if uh, you haven't clung your soul to someone else keep that for your husband or wife it will be such a bl blessing to yourself and to your husband or wife talk about it if you are engaged talk to your husband or your future husband or, or wife ask be honest with each other 
ask if there's anybody, if there has been anybody, and break that chain before you get married. Don't take that into your marriage. The Satan will only come and throw it in your face and he will use that against you. But with the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, you can overcome that. So it's not the end of the world, but it's very, very important. So I actually wrote, wanted to go further, but our time is running out. So I just want to do a prayer on this. Next week we will continue on Genesis 34 and the story of Shechem and to Dinah and the complications there was. And yeah, so read through it and yeah, let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for what you have done. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for sealing us with the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, convict us where we do wrong. Yes, Holy Spirit, I ask you to forgive us on things that we did in our past that still bound our souls, that clang our souls to somebody else because we did make foolish decisions in our past. Lord, I ask you to forgive us, to break every chain. Thank you that we know that you died on the cross for all our sins. That's past and also in the future. Lord, but help us. Holy Spirit, guide us. Show us the truth. Protect us. That we will not step over the barriers. The boundaries that we will stay inside them. So Lord, I just come to you and just thank you for the cross. Thank you for your, for your mercy and your grace. Thank you that we know that we can give anything to you. And it's only by your blood that we forget our, that we can get our forgiveness. Yes, Lord. And thank you for each person here that's still pure and clean. Help them to protect that until they get married for their loved ones. Because that is in your will. Lord, but thank you for forgiveness that we know if we did something wrong in the past that you, we can be forgiven. Don't let the enemy put it in front of us all the time. Take it away and let us believe that your blood it was there for us to cleanse us cleanly, completely. I thank you for that in the name, the name above all names, our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you.